Hey everybody, this is Bo. Uh, just going to give everybody a quick tour of the forge here. Uh, I know I've had a lot of people that have kind of asked um, if I do it at home, kind of the same way I do out in demos, for those of you that have seen. Um, and if you're, if you're there, just give me a thumbs up so I know that you can hear me okay. And feel free to type comments down there in the bottom or uh, questions be glad to uh, answer those as we as we go um, as you can see from up above it's a gorgeous day um, I'm going to fire up the forge here in a little bit when I get done with this and do do a few things uh, just kind of pill um, probably going to make some uh, uh, some bottle openers or just kind of kind of tinker around kind of see how the day goes and see what kind of uh, things want to be made it's kind of uh, the way I go about it a lot of times. Um, so like I said, if you can hear me okay, just kind of give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'm not sure how good my connection is down here uh, this far away from uh, the Wi-Fi. Um, beautiful place of, of land that we have here. I'm going to, um, if you have a little vertigo, I'm going <laughs> to hold on to something. I'm going to kind of switch our camera view around a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. All right, so here we go. Um, so this is kind of the forge area. Um, over here, we'll, we'll actually, we'll have our uh, classes right in this area here. I'll put up a 12 by 25 tarp, and then we'll dig our duck nests up underneath it and so that we have cover from the sun so we're able to see our metal okay. And um, last class we had didn't have any rain, so but if we do have rain, at least it'll keep us out of the elements um, as well. Um, as you can see, Kind of over there i've got uh, plenty of fuel just kind of needs to be cut and split um, i'm very fortunate and uh, blessed that uh, i like to use pine because it burns uh, really hot uh, makes really great charcoal and uh, people don't mind me coming to get pine that they've got <laughs> falling down for um, basically just my time to go get it so I'm, I'm very blessed for that and i've had quite a few people that have offered me to um, come get pine from them um, as you can see here, I've got some kind of stockpile kind of drying out just a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the forage area and have this wonderful covered area um, that when we moved here was, was here and uh, was fortunate enough this past weekend to have a good friend of mine um, help me put a roof over half of it because it, uh, it was leaking quite, <laughs> quite, quite bad. So there's nothing worse than trying to forge in the rain and um, have, have, have the leakiness. Uh, just kind of <laughs> dampers your spirit, so to speak. All right, we'll kind of walk around here and kind of give you an idea of of how I do it at home. Uh, like I said, I've had a lot of people that have asked, you know, do you do it at home the same way you do it here? And uh, the answer is pretty much yes. Um, as you can see, I have a stockpile of wood already split, ready to go into the forge. I like to kind of keep uh, a couple of forge worth um, kind of done. I try to keep it as primitive as possible. Um, just an easy, my hand crank grinder and a vise that I haven't quite got mounted yet because I'm not really quite sure where I want to put it. And then we'll turn around here from the working side and there's my bucket of goodies. Pretty much that's what I carry with me when I go out and do demos and I still work for the most part right out of it. Um, have a hand crank blower that I use. Um, goes into this nice wash tub as you see I'm getting ready to kind of fire it up um, have a have a nice little fire and build me some charcoal and uh, get to work kind of get it hot hit it hard um, in my anvil area uh, with some tools uh, some of those I've made a lot of them I have not uh, just because it's just uh, <laughs> tongue tongue making is not my specialty uh, I'd rather spend my time doing other things um, and I've got it as you can see here just some lawnmower blades that I use to kind of attach my anvil to my uh, anvil stump and I've got a, a chain wrapped around it as well to kind of help damper the sign the, the sound I uh, don't want to uh, kind of <laughs> upset the, uh, the the neighbors with my banging and I do have a, a, a rather large stump uh, I like uh, this size for me it works really well because um, it gives me kind of a bench area to kind of put things on as I'm working or different projects working, you know, kind of simultaneously um, that I use. Uh, once again, this was 
somebody had a tree fall down and um, was pleased for me to come get it. Um, I just had to kind of get it treated. I bet it all nice treated with linseed and um, it's ready to, it, it works quite well. Uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to have it. Um, another nice little addition that I have is a, it's just a railroad uh, rail track um, that I've just mounted uh, about three feet down into the, the ground. Makes a great anvil. It's great for straightening out metal that I have because um, it's, it's quite uh, secure in there. And since you're only really working, for the most part, your, your hammer round, so it's perfect right here to, to use this section to kind of if I need to straighten out metal, uh, it works really, really well for that. Uh, so we'll come around over here. You see I have more wood, uh, fuel uh, stacked up, ready to be split down to smaller pieces um, to, to work in the forge. And uh, here are anvils that we actually use for the class. Um, uh, my classes are limited to six. Um, so I have six nice little steel blocks here that we use uh, for the class. Uh, they're, my opinion, about the perfect size, uh, especially if you're you know, starting out. Uh, it really works really, really well um, for that. Um, that's that's kind of that's the original anvil that I used uh, six eight years ago, and I still use it when I go out on demos. I, I'm very uh, attached to this anvil. <laughs> it works really really well. I found it somewhere. Um, I think they were actually at the time when I found it, they were using it as a doorstop. So um, <laughs> now I use it for an anvil. Um, and as you can kind of see, I'll walk around over here. Uh, there's charcoal that I that I save from each fire. So if I need to get something really really hot, it's kind of hard to see. Here we go. See, it's just charcoal that I after the end of the fire that I have left over. Um, I will save it because um, I can always use that, add it to my fire uh, if I need to add some additional heat to whatever project that I'm working on. And more fuel. And then this is kind of the type of metal that I work with. Uh, I go out to a scrap yard and um, use it. You know, they don't mind me picking it up, but I can get it at a really reasonable rate uh, from just stainless steel bolts. Um, there's some uh, tines um, off a of hay rake. There's some rebar. I've got a project that I'm going to be doing with that shortly. I'm going to make some tripods out of that. And then um, just miscellaneous metal, you know, just kind of depends on what I'm what I'm using as far as what I want to make at the time uh, as you can see it, it is kind of primitive because there's a lot of leaves everywhere it's that time of year um, and then of course the token raven that we have here for ravens keep um, if you have any questions feel free just kind of add them in down there I'll be glad to answer if, if I can uh, or address them later on uh, also, please share this um, with others so they can see it. Uh, I will be having another class. Uh, I'm going to switch back around so you can kind of see me again. So if you have a little vertigo, hang, hang on to something here. Um, there we go. Um, I will be having another class at the end of March. Um, depending on how that goes, I may have another one in May as well. Not, that one's not quite decided yet. Um, it's kind of tentative, but I do know I will have one the last weekend of March. Uh, registration will be open after the first and then we will we'll, um, as soon as the class is full at six and we'll kind of make that decision if there's enough interest to have another one in in May as well um, if, if you can hear me okay once again just kind of give me a thumbs up there so I know that uh, the connection is working okay it's, I'm a little far from Wi-Fi from where I'm at um, if you have any questions once again please ask uh, I got started with this um, Gosh, six, eight years ago, maybe. Um, starting to do some research and wanting to get into doing some blacksmithing, and uh, it was just, uh, it was, a, it was a costly venture. <laughs> you know, by the time you ended up trying to, you know, sink, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars into anvils and and tools, and then you've got to, you know, uh, yeah, it's a different charcoal fo forge if you're using charcoal. Or I know a lot of people use uh, propane now. That works for them uh, really well. Uh, I've kind of always enjoyed this as I got into it. Um, it's kind of how I learned. Uh, I like it because it, it doesn't take a lot of um, 
cost. <laughs> you know, I, uh, not, not, not trying to be cheap, but I like, don't mind being frugal. Uh, it works well for what I do. Uh, I mainly do some smaller things. I'll do some, I have done knives and a lot of tools, chisels, punches, that kind of thing. But, uh, most of it's just kind of, kind of trinkety kind of stuff. Um, you know, tripods, grill grates, you know, those type of things. I don't really work with anything huge, super huge. Um, but it works really well for that, and it was uh, something I could afford to get into um, and, and not spend an exorbitant amount of money doing it. Uh, you know, all I needed in the beginning was a, you know, a hole. I had a bellows that, that we made, and we'll be making those at the class in, at the end of March um, for you to take with you. And, you know, you shovel, dig a hole, you, uh, find some pine, start her up, and you're good to go. That's really kind of all you need. You need a nice little block of metal of some sort. Um, which are, uh, once again, it's very cost effective to find those um, at salvage yards or um, even some of the, I've heard, I haven't had any personal experience, but I've heard, you know, some pretty good things on the uh, less expensive. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, for, you know, not very much money, you know, uh, easily less than $100, you know, you can start blacksmithing. Um, you know, I, I don't mind uh, it being very primitive, and then you can kind of take it to wherever it is that you, it kind of leads you. Um, uh, if if you, you've enjoyed this little short video, hopefully it hasn't been too long and haven't bored you too much, um, feel free to like it, share it, show others. Um, if you have questions, please don't mind uh, asking, and um, maybe at, at some point I'll do one. I'll do a, do a live forge, and we'll uh, show you kind of how I do what it is I do. Um, hope you all have a great day, and enjoy your holidays, and uh, I'll see you next time.